It was the 60s, the animator of King Kong, Willis or Brian, also known as the teacher of the great Ray Harryhausen, thought that it would be good if we faced King Kong with another giant monster. He immediately told the producers. They instead hand over the production to Tojo and send him to fry popcorn. From this idea was born the most epic confrontation since Argentina vs. France, Goku vs. Superman, the corner greengrocer vs. the street greengrocer. That's right, friends. Today I bring you King Kong vs. Godzilla from 1962, the Japanese version because the otaku in me finds it hard to use it. And let's start. But first, don't do like they did with Willis. Don't send me to fry popcorn. Like, subscribe. I'm a growing YouTuber. And then you'll be able to tell everyone that you were here before I became an asshole. This film was like a resurgence for both franchises, since both Son of Kong from 1933 and Godzilla Raids Again were not so well received by audiences, especially Son of Kong, which was produced and released in just nine months to take advantage of the success of the first, being a sequel of much lower quality, so unbearable that I was wandering around for two months to write the summary, and in the end, I didn't even do it. The plot of King Kong is very far-fetched, I mean not what King Kong does himself, King Kong just wants to have some lizard steaks. What is far-fetched is the plot of how they find him and take him to Godzilla. What we are watching is a documentary-type TV program, sponsored by a pharmaceutical company, which the pharmaceutical company doesn't give a damn about, and if they don't give a damn, imagine me. Lucky at least, this TV show serves to tell us that there is a US nuclear submarine in the Arctic, surely seeking freedom. They say that the submarine is investigating an unusual phenomenon in the area. ¿Qué podrá ser? Meanwhile, Tarpedo and Tarambana discuss how to make the show more entertaining and captivate more audience, mentioning that tomorrow they would have a meeting with Mr. Taiko from the pharmaceutical agency, and that they should mention something about an island that they heard about from a doctor. Yes, we are watching a Godzilla movie, hold on. Our protagonists, who are actually called Sakurai and Kinsaburo, finally meet with Mr. Taiko and the doctor. The latter reveals to them that on an island in the Caribbean called Pharaoh, he found some very interesting blackberries, and even a giant monster. But the important thing they are the blackberries, so Mr. Burrito finally decides to send our two protagonists, in order to obtain more ratings, to Faroe Island to investigate these extraordinary blackberries, and if they can the giant beast. Our heroes, resigned to their fate, meet at Kinsaburo's house, where we meet his girlfriend, Fumiko, who is also Sakurai's sister. They also show us a very resistant thread that could become important later, one never knows. Now let's see if something happens with the submarine because it's almost 20 minutes into the movie and nothing happens. Indeed, it is seen that they saw oil inside the iceberg because they hit the iceberg right through. The submarine begins to leak nuclear fuel. The damage suffered by the collision is too much. The submarine is about to explode when suddenly a copyright protected roar is heard. We return with Tarapito and Taranbana, who are already on their way to find the One Piece. They are about to reach Faroe Island. Why not Skull Island? If I had made a summary of The Son of Kong, we could know. Already on the island, Sakurai, Kinsanburo, and Luffy after the sunbed are captured by the natives. Let's say today I have my serious doubts if they would allow it as they are. To of all this, the natives take our protagonists to be sacrificed to the god of the island. Although if it were not for the human sacrifice, they are a very organized and egalitarian society. Fortunately, our heroes managed to save themselves by exchanging their lives for objects that they carried with them. However, at that moment, the god of the island is present. And although at first they thought that the natives worshiped the storm, they soon realized that they do not. That's right. There is something more powerful and imposing on that island. Well, 25 minutes of the movie are going by and it's time for something to happen. So we go back to see what happened to the submarine. A helicopter is flying over the accident area, when suddenly, that's it, our true hero is finally freed from his ice prison, and he is enraged, imagine. They kept him locked in ice for seven years. Luckily there is a play mobile set, I mean a military base conveniently nearby in the middle of the Arctic Ocean, so that Godzilla can take out all his rage. But conventional weapons are no match for Godzilla who destroys everything in his path, releasing all his anger, incinerating everything in his path. We return with Sakurai and company, who are looking for our other protagonist. It is time for him to appear and make a mess of things. At night in the village, the natives prepare some vases with magic blackberry juice, 
while our heroes rest, Discount Luffy sends some of the children to look for some blackberry juice for Kinsaburo who is sick. But in the darkness, a surprising creature hides. Attracted by the blackberry juice, it heads towards where the little one is. And finally our second protagonist appears, King Kong, who this time is brought to life by a rubber suit to be in accordance with the aesthetics of the Godzilla movies. And his height is also increased from 15 meters in 1933 to 45 meters in this movie. Since if that had not been the case, Godzilla would have made an ape sandwich with poor Kong. Kong doesn't want to share any of the blackberry wine with anyone, so he confronts the octopus. He manages to scare him away with his secret technique of throwing some stones. Now if the octopus is out of the way and thirstier than a construction worker on a Friday afternoon, he drinks all the blackberry wine and then falls asleep. The big idea of the Japanese is to first bring King Kong to Japan, second France, third, make him fight Godzilla, they're truly geniuses, it is obvious that they did not see King Kong first movie. Return to Japan, Godzilla continues doing his thing, I don't know if he was hit by a train as a child, or if he is from the truckers union, but for the love of God he can't see a train. The geniuses of the self-defense forces of Japan have no better idea than to try to electrocute Godzilla with a million volts, it is clear that they did not see Godzilla's one either for God's sake. We return to Kong who is woken up and is hung over. So he doesn't want to have anything to do with anyone. Because of the risk involved, they decide to sink the raft that was full of explosives. However, Kong survives and is free to go on a rampage. Geniuses. Kong arrives in Japan and rampages through several towns. He continues his path of destruction through Japan until he finally meets Godzilla. After almost an hour of film, the battle begins. Unfortunately, the first encounter does not last long and Kong ends up retreating. Since he cannot do anything against Godzilla's radioactive breath and his secret technique of throwing stones seemed to have no effect. If they continued like this, Kong was going to end up like a roast monkey. Anyway, soldier who flees serves for another battle. The Japanese self-defense forces continue with their plan to stop Godzilla, for that they prepare explosive traps along with a huge hole to end into the million volt electric trap. Godzilla is directed towards the giant pit. With fire and explosions, he finally falls into the trap. <laughs> Already inside the well, they detonate explosives to try to bury Godzilla, but it is in vain. He frees himself and continues on his path of destruction. They manage to contain him with the overloaded electrical lines, although it is most likely only momentary. Kong, for his part, continued wreaking havoc in Japan and we discovered that electricity powers him. After biting high-tension lines, he goes into a frenzy of destruction that leads him to stop a train and kidnap a poor girl. I think it's the girlfriend of one of the protagonists, but I couldn't care less. I understand poor Kong, who knows since when he has been alone on that island. He must be really horny. Ah, but old habits never die. He ends up taking the poor girl to the tallest building in the area and climbs on top of it, you never learn Kong, you never learn. To stop Kong, and knowing how much of a party animal he is, they devise a plan to make him suck a powder made with the magic berries wink wink, and put him back to sleep. Now with Kong, finally out of the game, they devise a plan to kill two giant monsters with one shot, they are going to send the Kong tied to some giant balloons, using the super strong thread from the beginning, come on, I told you it would be useful later. Everyone as they laughed at me, they thought I was crazy but who was right? Sorry, it's late now, and I think I'm getting sleepy. As I told you, they are going to tie Kong to some giant balloons with the thread and they are going to send him to Godzilla so that they can settle between themselves that so much. Now yes, the final fight is going to happen. The reason for this whole movie, the final battle between Kong and Godzilla, let's go. Kong starts the fight with a kick worthy of Cootie Romero, which sends Godzilla flying into the air. It's all ball judge. However, Kong is still no match for Godzilla. He tries to ambush him inside the crater of a volcano. But his secret technique of throwing stones still cannot defeat Godzilla's strength and atomic breath. Kong fights bravely, but is thrown against the rocks by Godzilla's tail. And when he hits his head against them, he becomes unconscious. With the fight almost defined, Godzilla begins to bury Kong under stones. 
But when everything was already lost, a miracle happens, lightning begins to fall on Kong, putting him in berserk mode. Facing Godzilla now as equals, with the perception of reality completely altered, connecting devastating blows, helped by his electric charge. Both entangled in a fierce battle, they continue down the mountain, destroying everything in their path, until upon reaching the coast they both fall into the ocean, thus ending the terrible fight, without knowing who was the winner. But wait, what is that in the ocean, that's right it's Kong, who is heading back to his island, after all the only thing he wanted was to be able to enjoy his wine, peacefully in his island, which is something we can all understand, and with regards to Godzilla, it surely survived, after all, there are about a zillion more movies to go, and the end. And this is how this great movie ends, who do you think won? Would you like to try the magic blackberry wine? Let's talk in the comments, and as always if you like the video I invite you to subscribe, I upload content all the time, and it helps me grow and to be able to continue. You can also like, ringing the bell also helps, so we'll see you next time, when we watch together.